The protest in Pike County by a group of Quest Energy coal miners protesting over unpaid wages came to an end Wednesday evening. The miners had blocked a coal train from leaving the Quest mine near Kemper after the company failed to pay them for several weeks' work. I'm joined tonight in the studio by several of those miners and their supporters. Guys, thank you so much for coming by to talk to us. Um, so Wednesday ended a three-day protest there at the Quest mine where you guys were uh, asking the company to pay you for several weeks' wages. Now, the company has admitted that there were some issues that resulted in them uh, getting behind you guys to pay. But it's over with now. You've got your full paydays as of as of yesterday evening. So how does it feel to be to finally be off the train tracks? Great. <laughs> Great. It's a blessing. Um, we were tired and cold, but we needed our money. And we knew that that was the only way to get our money. Uh, I, and I forgot to get you guys to introduce yourself, so why don't you go ahead and tell me your all's names and, and go ahead. Okay, so. I'm Jennifer. This is Brandon Blackburn. This is Dylan Davidson, Justin Hunt, and Dusty Maynard. Okay, so all these guys are uh, either current or former Quest Energy coal miners. Um, you're, you're here for, for support of these guys. You guys uh, yes, spent, spent some time together on the, on the tracks out there. So mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about what it's like, Dusty. Tell me a little bit about what it was like um, this week while you guys were out there protesting. It just cold and wet. <laughs> You know, uh, by no, by any means, we didn't want to do that. But in order to get paid, it seemed like it's all we had left to do. I mean, you know, uh, one day late, three days late, a week late, and you get two and three weeks late, it, it's pretty rough. Especially when, you know, most people are on a, payday to payday basis, either one, uh, each week or bi-weekly, you know. Uh, so it is pretty rough and, I mean, I hated to do that. Didn't want to do that, but I had to, I had to get paid. I mean, thankfully, we got paid and I want to thank everybody in the community and, and everyone that helped us. And, I mean, I actually want to thank the mines for paying us, you know. But I hope that we can get all this behind us. Uh, Go back to work. Yeah. Yeah. So. Go back to work like this never happened because, like Dusty said, we didn't want to do this. We just wanted what was rightfully ours, that we'd work between two rocks to provide a fan to provide for our families, you know, because at the end of the day, every man here standing, they don't go there because they want to. They don't go there because, because they have to. They go there because they want to make a living in Eastern Kentucky to support their families. And that's the best paying job that most of us know how to do. Um, you know, we just wanted, we didn't want no handouts from nobody. We wanted what we was rightfully entitled to. Because, you know, every man here in this room is proud to work in the mines because it is a dying industry. And you know, this generation standing right here in this building is probably going to be the last generation of real coal miners because uh, these companies don't want to teach nobody nothing. And after up after we're gone, I don't know what the younger generation's gonna do. But it makes me proud to be to be able to say that I worked in these hills for fifteen years. And in that fifteen years I have never, never even thought about it, doing something like this to get paid. My paydays was maybe one or two days late but never three weeks later. Let's talk a little bit about what it was like yesterday whenever those paydays finally came through. Jennifer, tell me a little bit about uh, when you guys were sitting around waiting for, for that money to finally be deposited into your account and then all of a sudden it's there. What was that like? Um, everybody kept checking. The Paycheck Stub app is entirely different than what the bank account is. Every man's paid direct deposit. 
the paycheck stubs hit within 20 or 30 minutes, you know, after we were told that we would get paid. But it was hours later, and you know, that's probably not their fault, but it was like hours later, everybody kept checking and checking, which we get text messages when ours hits, you know, our banking app text us. But ours hit first, and then a little bit later, somebody else's hit, and then, you know, it was just spaced out. And right when ours hit, I thought, okay, everybody else is going to get it. So we started doing little things to clean up, and, you know, we had people in the community that was helping us. Um, Stacy and Lisa Hunt from that area, they, they were wonderful. They came and helped us clean everything up and get everything up. And, you know, we had support from... I mean, it's unreal the people we had support from. You know, we had um, Glenn Martin Hammond. He provided us with tents and f seen that we w had plenty of food and, you know, drinks and anything that we needed. I think Ray Jones, I think it was Ray Jones that Ray Jones was sent there. us a, a porta potty. Um, mm -hmm. Matt Reynolds was there every day. Um, Cisco. Eugene Cisco. When those men came at me yesterday, Eugene Cisco was up front and center. I mean, you know, um, prayed with us and, um, you know, just we had support from people from other states and you don't realize how blessed you are until you're in this situation because, you know, most of these people we didn't even know until this. And, um, you know, we appreciate everything especially the prayers, because that's what brought us through it. Dusty, um, I'm going to, uh, I'll ask you this question and then we'll, then we'll kind of wrap it up here. Uh, look forward a little bit past this situation. What are you guys going to do now? Because you've expressed to me at different times that you were concerned about whether or not you'd have a job at Quest after all this was over with. <laughs> just kind of take me into the future if you can and just kind of tell me what do you think is in the future for you and your fellow miners here? Well, I've spent my whole career as a coal miner, and I would, I would love to finish my career as a coal miner. Uh, as as far as looking into the future, I, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't, I really don't know. Uh, I guess we're going to have to take it one day at a time and see how it plays out. I mean, you know, I was even concerned about maybe even being blackballed from from all mines because of this, but. I mean, that's it's uh, it's it's stressful times because uh, even though we've gotten paid, just like being able to go back to work, uh, I don't, you know, uh, I'm under the assumption that uh, Mark Jensen said that, you know, uh, we're going to put all this behind us that nobody's lost their job and. Uh, you can come back without prejudice, that's what we were told. Yeah, yeah. But they can say anything when you go back, how do you know how you're going to be treated? Right. You know? Yeah. You just have that, to see. That's going to be, uh, that's, that's, that's going to be probably just as, if not more stressful than getting our pay. So I guess it's going to be a, a long road. To, so I uh, I think I, I think I speak for all of our Folks out there that are watching, um, we wish you guys the best, and we're glad that you guys got paid, and uh, you've got a lot of people that have been praying for you. I'm sure that they'll be happy to continue praying for you, and I want to thank you for joining us today in the Mountaintop Studios uh, to come in and talk to me and kind of take me through a little bit about what happened yesterday. Now, that uh, train that was famously blocked by this group of miners uh, remains at the Quest Energy Mine in Pike County right now. Uh, CSX indicated that they plan to they planned to move it out either Thursday evening or soon thereafter.